Hello friends of Valerie Ling. This is me trying to do something fancy on Facebook and that is to actually bring someone in to a Facebook interview that I was trying to do on our practice page um, and then just couldn't figure out how to do it. And the only way for me to actually do it was to hop onto my personal profile. So you get to, um, oh, hello, Kim. Facebook's telling me to wave to you, so I'm going to wave. I'm trying to bring on Jessica Tilbrook, trying to have done this interview in our practice page. And Kim says, get them to press the green person. <laughs> oh, Kim, where's the green person? All right, Facebook is talking to me. Do it from my personal profile my friends oh please it worked my <laughs> newest friend Jessica so Jess I'm doing this from my personal profile because I couldn't figure out how to do it from the practice page but oh well <laughs> uh, that's fine Jess you are a new addition to our practice is that correct absolutely I'm very excited to be part of the team I'm the new dietitian hello everyone <laughs> well, we've got Kim watching. Um, Kim. All right. Now, as a dietitian, um, tell me a little bit about, or tell us a little bit about what you do, Jess. Yeah, well, I'm sure many people have heard um, about dietitians, but we, there's actually quite a spectrum of us. So we do lots of different types of jobs. Um, you'll, you'll hear anything from sports dietetics to dietitians working in the food industry. And um, I guess where my passion lies is really helping people to improve their relationship with food. So um, whether that's people who have dieted for a long time or um, younger adolescents that are having some issues with around food. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what I love to do. Um, I like how you use the term relationship to food. Mm. <laughs> We've all got different relationships with food. Um, yeah. Do you want to just say a little bit about that, Jess? I'm putting you on the spot. We didn't. Speak you are. Food. Yeah, I mean, um, food means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, it's it's a big part of our culture, Australian culture, culture all over the world. Um, it can be a sign of love. So bring, coming together at the table and eating together can be a massive thing for some families. Um, and I think there's a lot of food rules um, that we put on ourselves that really impact that, you know, um, love around food. Um, we, we get a bit nervous to eat some things these days and um, really having that sound relationship with food can help us, um, you know, eat more healthily. Um, and, and you'll probably hear me talk about that more over the next few weeks. So Jess, um, I almost forgot about our Facebook Live today. <laughs> Yes. And let me tell you about the moments leading up to this Facebook Live. Okay. I will confess, I did not have breakfast. Okay? Oh. It went something like this. Woke up mm -hmm. in the morning, it's exam period for my kids, have visitors visiting me as well. Totally excited about all of this. Um, mm -hmm. Made lunch for everybody uh, and then thought, oh my goodness, I've got you know a to-do list, went to my whiteboard, wrote all the things I had to do, sat down and did my things. Mm -hmm. And then started to feel a bit woozy <laughs> mm. <laughs> at about 11 o'clock. And I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, I don't think I've had anything to eat yet. I completely forgot. Mm. Um, is this a common thing? It, it is so normal. And especially leading up to Christmas, we've got, you know, busy families. We've got busy professionals. We've got busy carers. Um, and sometimes food is the last thing on our mind. We're running around very, very busy. Um, and so we know this sort of puts us at risk of burnout. And I know you love to talk about burnout. Um, <laughs> and with our food, it can really impact us sort of one or two, of two ways. Um, it can impact our appetite. So we actually don't feel like eating as much. So a good example for you, you were so busy, you forgot. Um, or... For some people, we can sort of turn to food in times of stress and it can be um, a source of comfort and more of that emotional eating. So it can go one of two ways and there's not, not a simple answer for all, but there's a few strategies we can use in these situations. Yeah. 
I, I think we had this conversation. I was saying to you, you know, as part of the burnout prevention work, I was really, really, really keen to get a multidisciplinary approach to it. Mm. Uh, one of the things that we find is that people who take care of others are actually not very good at taking care of themselves. And yep. so it's not just um, health in terms of just thinking about what you eat, but the consequences of it as well. Uh, when you have dysregular eating um, and when you actually get into, like you said, you start to forget your own cues. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what might be some of the ways someone like myself, <laughs> during this busy period in the lead up to Christmas, what might be some of the things you might uh, suggest? Yeah, um, well, there's, there's lots of different ways, but I thought I'd sort of bring, I've got three quite simple ones that everyone can try to implement when, when they're quite busy and the, the things I use as well day to day. Um, the first would be, and um, it is important and I understand it can be quite hard for some people who have got busy nurses on the wards or um, busy mums running around, but really taking some time to step away from the desk or whatever you're doing, 10, 15 minutes to step away and eat. And I know that sounds simple and I know that sounds um, a bit trivial sometimes, but it is one of the simplest ways we can really care for ourselves. Um, so um, for some people who are really struggling, even setting something like an alarm, whether that's for your lunchtime or a mid-meal snack, afternoon snack, can really help in those situations um, and just taking that time to step away. Um, so Jess, yeah. I'm going to give myself a big tick for that. Because uh, prompting me about the Facebook Live was to think about my eating. And then mm. I realized I had not eaten. And that's exactly <laughs> what I did. I dug into my own burnout thinking and thought, I need to step away from the desk right now and listen to my body. Because I was starting to feel like I was fainting a little bit out of mm. my zone. And you're right. 10 to 15 minutes, I went to have a little bit of a walk. And I actually started to tap into um, feeling hungry again. Yeah. So, Big tick for that one. So that was number one. A little bit of mindfulness there. So that's, that's good. Stepping away. You never know what can happen in 10 minutes, hey? <laughs> um, I guess the second thing is I understand stepping away for everyone's not, they can't do it. Say you don't have that great time at work. Um, so we've talked about this before, but having a little snack drawer. Um, or snacks in your backpack or a handbag or a nappy bag that you can have available at, you know, all times when you're on the run. Um, so things like, you know, nut bars, nuts, um, ready-made muffins, little popcorn bags, anything that you like and that's going to sustain you that bit longer is going to be great just to have in, um, in your bag, easy to reach to. Now you've got me curious. I only associate popcorn with movies. How did you choose those things to put into a snack drawer or a snack bag? Yeah, well, um, I, I chose popcorn because um, they do some nice little snack size bags and they're really easy to grab on the go. Um, but it doesn't have to be that snacks can be whatever's going to satisfy you and also nourish you. Um, so, yeah, there's no, we don't want any hard and fast rules around here. Anything that you think in this time is going to serve you best is the best kind of food we can get in. And that's, that's the best thing about it. <laughs> Thanks for that. I think that's a great tip. Um, I used to do that when uh, my kids were little, but I have to confess the snacks were always for them. I haven't <laughs> thought about lately making some things for myself to put into my bag. And I'm very often on the road uh, mm. and very often neglecting to eat. Yes. I do confess. <laughs> okay, so number two. That's a thing for me to do, not a tick. <laughs> On the to-do list, that's good. Um, and the last one um, is thinking about meals. Um, if we really are not having time to sit down, um, trying something that we would call a sort of all-in-one meal, which would be like um, a smoothie or a soup that's really easy to get down really quick but also is quite nutritionally balanced as well. A bit of carbohydrate, a bit of protein, a bit of fat to get you through that time until your next meal. And um, I am really excited. I'm going to link a few sort of good recipes there for everyone to take a look at because there's, there's lots of different options out there. Um, and you can make them beforehand. You can get ones that you can mix up at your desk. There's, yeah, so many options. 
So Jessica, I started to think about, um, I'm coming up to the end of the year, it's the end of my um, insurance. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I suddenly feel the need to use up all of the things that I haven't used up. And you know what, for very good reason, it's not like I'm just um, thinking that I'm just going to go out on a private health insurance splurge. Um, at the moment, I've got lots of aches and pains. Mm -hmm. uh, just because like, I'm very faithful with the dentist because I'm very scared of eventually <laughs> having to have a root canal. <laughs> oh, no. But not so good with the other things, um, mm -hmm. seeing a physiotherapist or a chiropractor, which I actually really need because I've had mm -hmm. sport injuries this year. Yeah. And I was talking to a girlfriend of mine. And I said, I think I actually need to book in with Jessica because, to be honest, I have never had my nutrition and eating habits reviewed ever. Mm. Right, and, and I've got multiple caring roles. So uh, I'm a, a mom, I'm a wife, um, I'm in clinical work, uh, I take care of lots of different people. And I don't think I've ever really stopped to wonder or have a think about what works for me and what I need. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised. That's, that's, it's quite often that um, we find you go in to look at your health insurance and there is... Um, insurance for dietetics if you have extras go in have a look it's usually in there with your physio and things like that and it does sort of go to the wayside sometimes a lot of people don't realize it's there um, you know dental does get used quite a lot but um, dietetics physio sometimes it just you know you've got a couple of hundred dollars there that could be used um, and yeah um, a lot of people haven't you know had a chat to a dietitian to see what their nutritional needs might be so it's a really good um, option leading up towards the end of the year to really pop in, have a chat, see what your relationship with food is like, but also if there's anything you might be needing as well. So, yeah, may as well have a look and not miss well, out on it. <laughs> Thanks for uh, chatting with me today. I thought it was a bit ironic that I myself forgot about the interview and then realised that uh, I actually need help myself. <laughs> so I think I'm actually quite serious. I probably am going to book in with you, Jess, because I'm a fervent believer that those of us who care for others, we just don't take the time or, or the mind space to care for ourselves. And mm -hmm. something that I often say, it's like a car trying to go the distance without petrol, without fuel. And, mm -hmm. and one of the major sources of fuel for us is um, what we take in in terms of our food. So I'm looking forward to hearing more from you this week. We'll be doing uh, more of such interviews. And yes. um, looking forward to some of the links that you have to post for us as well. Yeah. Well, thanks Thank so much you. for having me. Bye. Bye.